In this video lecture, we're going to do um, a little bit of review of the um, topic 14 on transcription. I'm going to make this a few parts so you don't have to watch every video or the whole video if you don't want to. But the first part, we'll talk about transcription um, and the initiation of transcription and the difference between prokaryotic and eukaryotic transcription. And then I'll make a separate video where I review the uh, post transcriptional processing of pre mRNA, so 5' cap addition, poly A tail addition, and splicing. So when we talk about transcription, one thing to remember is that not all, not all DNA is transcribed into RNA. So only certain parts of the DNA is turned into RNA. And so the cell has to have a way of knowing where is the region of DNA that needs to be transcribed. Okay, so where, where does the RNA polymerase need to start transcription? And so all genes and DNA have what's called a transcriptional start site. So you'll see here in this figure, this is the start site. Okay, and remember all mRNA or all RNA is made in a five prime to three prime direction. That means that on the template strand, it's gonna read in the three prime to five prime direction. So the RNA polymerase is actually gonna be reading this bottom strand and it's gonna be making a transcript of mRNA that's essentially complementary or essentially identical to this top strand of DNA, okay? So this is the template right here. So template, all right? And this top strand is gonna be turned into mRNA. So in order for the cell to tell, to know where to start transcribing, it has to have special parts of the DNA that tell it to start at this transcriptional start site. And the way it does this is through the use of promoters. So promoters are sequences of DNA that are found upstream from the transcriptional start site. And so upstream is typically what we mean um, before the start site. So this is upstream, all right? And so for example, it'd be five prime in the five prime direction of the mRNA that you're making. That would be the upstream region that we're referring to. And promoters are highly conserved sequences, and there's a, a variety of different types of promoters, so it's kind of hard to generalize them. But they typically have conserved sequences upstream of the transcriptional start site. And these conserved sequences are what tells the RNA polymerase to bind to this region of DNA here. So the RNA polymerase will kind of bind to the promoter and tells the RNA polymerase that you're going to be synthesizing or transcribing RNA in this direction. Okay, so these are promoters and there's different types of promoters. Promoters are what, what are called asymmetrical, meaning that um, they kind of, they're not perfectly symmetrical, which means that they in, inherent in how promoters are arranged, they govern direction of transcription. So in bacterial promoters, so the first type of promoter we introduced in class is prokaryotic promoters, you typically find in the minus 10 sequence and the minus 35 sequence, a highly conserved region of DNA that acts as the promoter. So in bacterial promoters, the sequence is in the minus 10 or 10 nucleotides upstream from the start site and 35 nucleotides upstream from the start site. And what these promoters do in bacteria is they govern where the RNA polymerase will bind to. And because they're not symmetrical, depending on which strand the promoters are on, will actually govern which direction the RNA polymerase can go. Now remember, RNA polymerase, no matter what, is always going to synthesize mRNA in the five prime to three prime direction. But it can synthesize, it can basically use the bottom strand to copy, right, to make a, to make a complement a transcript of, or it can also use the top strand. So if you look at this figure down here, gene B could be made in this direction, Okay. However, if the promoter was the, on the alternate strand, you could have gene A being made in an opposite direction. So both strands of DNA can actually code for different RNA transcripts, and the direction and then the strand position, or which strand is coding for the transcript, is governed by the role of the promoter. Wherever the promoter is, that's going to tell you which direction the RNA polymerase goes and which strand is being copied. And it's not important for our class or for our purposes to understand where the promoter has to be to go in one direction versus the other. So don't worry about knowing the, the actual directionality of all this, but just understand that that's the role of the promoters, is to govern the direction and the um, template strand of, 
of, during transcription. So we first looked at prokaryotic transcription um, initiation. So as I mentioned to you, the promoter starts initiation, but, but how, does, how does that work? Well, what happens is RNA polymerase will bind to uh, circular DNA. So remember that, that bacteria have a circular chromosome, essentially. And they'll start scanning that chromosome for a promoter. They're going to look for a promoter region over here. Okay? And once it finds a promoter, right, that's when it can tell it to start transcription. So the RNA polymerase binds and kind of scans along and waits for a promoter to, to be found. To help that in bacteria only, there is a, a something called the sigma factor. And the sigma factor is responsible for binding to the promoter region and binding to the RNA polymerase. And it helps the RNA polymerase recognize the bacterial promoter sites. Remember, these are the sites that are minus 10 nucleotides and minus 35 nucleotides from the start site. So the sigma factor and RNA polymerase together will recognize the promoter, and that complex will initiate transcription. So once the RNA polymerase binds the sigma factor at the promoter site, the RNA polymerase will start to transcribe the, uh, the DNA. And at that point, about 10 nucleotides after a little bit of the RNA is made, the sigma factor is released, okay, and the RNA polymerase can go on and ba basically make a messenger RNA by itself, okay? So in bacteria, the sigma factor is important um, for recognizing the promoter and starting and initiating transcription. Lastly, once the transcript is made, <clears throat> here, see you have a mRNA, the RNA polymerase will hit what's called a termination site or a stop site. It's a special sequence of, on the DNA that tells the RNA polymerase to stop transcribing and no longer make any more RNA from it. And once it hits this transcriptional start, stop site, the RNA polymerase will fall off of the DNA and now can go back to the start and actually transcribe more of, of the same DNA. Okay, so three things that are important for bacterial transcription is the promoter region, the sigma factor, obviously the RNA polymerase itself, and one more thing is the termination signals, the stop sites to tell RNA polymerase to stop. And so that's basically prokaryotic transcription. It's a little bit simpler than eukaryotic, but it's a couple um, things that I want you to understand about the differences. So in prokaryotes, you really only have one RNA polymerase that does all the transcription, and you need a sigma factor required to recognize the promoter. Eukaryotes are a little bit more complicated. There are three RNA polymerases that make different types of RNAs. RNA polymerase one, transcribes non-coding RNAs, so these are things like ribosomal RNAs or the microRNAs or tRNAs that we talked about. RNA polymerase II transcribes messenger RNA. This is the RNA that we focus on. Um, and remember, this is the RNA that is made into, into proteins. And RNA polymerase III, like RNA polymerase I, also transcribes non-coding RNAs. So the, for the purposes of our class, we're only going to focus on RNA polymerase II for now and the synthesis of messenger RNA. The other thing that's required in eukaryotes is the presence of what are called general transcription factors. And these are, are you can kind of think of them as similar to the sigma factor in the sense that these are required in order to initiate transcription and recognize the promoter. That's the purpose of the general transcription factors. They help the RNA polymerase bind to the promoter region to start transcription, um, and, and that's what their, their role is. So eukaryotic promoters aren't necessarily as conserved as prokaryotic promoters are, but they do have several things that they, they always have in common. Okay, the first is the presence of a Tata box. And a Tata box is named because it's, it's essentially a very conserved region of the DNA sequence that's, very, that's rich in thymines and adenine nucleotides. And so if you look at this sequence, you see a bunch of TATATAs, and that's why it's named the Tata box. Typically, this is located 25 nucleotides upstream from the start site. So in this image here, if you have the start of transcription, you'll find the Tata box minus 25 nucleotides upstream of that start site. Because again, this is going to tell the RNA polymerase that you're going to bind to this region and you're going to be going in this direction. So remember, all promoters govern on which strands being transcribed and also the directionality of transcription. That's, based, that's all I want you to really know for eukaryotic promoters, that they have a Tata box about minus 25 nucleotides. 
they're much more complicated, so there's a lot of, of, of variety in the types of promoters and eukaryotes that we're not going to get into in this class. So how does transcription start in the eukaryotes? Well, remember we said that you need um, these general transcription factors. And so here I'm going to show you a four-step process on how transcription is initiated in eukaryotes. So the general transcription factors are all named in a, in a kind of a, a certain type of nomenclature. They're called TF2s, and these stand for transcription factors for RNA polymerase 2. Because remember, RNA polymerase 2 is the one that's making the messenger RNA. That's what we're going to talk about. And so each transcription factor is called TF2, and then they're numbered uh, typically A through whatever, A through H or something like that on an on a alphabetical level just to kind of distinguish them from each other. So we're not going to talk about all the transcription factors. I'm only going to mention a few of them that I want you to know. The first is TF2D over here. And TF2D is a transcription factor that contains as a complex another protein called TBP. And TD, TBP stands for Tata Box Binding Protein. And that's essentially what it does, is it binds to the Tata Box right here, okay, and positions TF2D on the promoter region. Well, if you look down at this picture, this is a, uh, a picture of what the DNA looks like when TF2D and T Tata box binding protein are bound to the promoter. They actually will bend the DNA almost at a 90 degree angle, okay? And what this does is this, cause a, this causes a very um, sharp distortion of the double helix that serves as a recognition and landmark site for all the other general transcription factors. So this initial step, this TF2D TBP binding to the promoter, um, is essentially required because without it, none of the other proteins necessary for transcription are, would recognize where they're supposed to bind to the promoter. So again, this serves as a landmark site. So TF2D TBP, first step, bends the DNA 90 degrees and serves as a landmark site that this is where the promoter is. The next step is now that you have TF2B, TF2D and TBP bound to the Tata box and promoter region, they recruit other transcription factors. And we're not, you don't have to remember them, but you can see them here, TF2B and 2E and 2H, for example, and also the RNA polymerase. They all recruit everything to the promoter region as a huge complex. Okay? So it's important to remember is that TF2D, TBP bound to the Tata box recruits everything including the RNA polymerase, in what we call the transcription initiation complex. All right. So without the binding and local distortion of DNA by TF2D, you wouldn't get recruitment of this transcription initiation complex. So the transcription initiation complex is all of these transcription factors here, along with the RNA polymerase bound to the transcription factors. So a, a very large complex. So once everything's bound and ready to go, you need to stimulate, you need to start um, transcription. And so the way that happens is one of the general transcription factors, TF2H, will actually phosphorylate RNA polymerase. Okay, so here's TF2H in this picture, and what it will do is it will basically add a phosphate molecule to the RNA polymerase 2 to phosphorylate it. And what this does is this sends RNA polymerase 2 on its way and actually initiates and starts transcription. So the second that TF2H phosphorylates RNA polymerase, RNA polymerase can go and start making messenger RNA. Once the RNA polymerase leaves and goes, goes on to start transcribing, the other general transcription factors that were previously bound to the promoter will actually disassemble and leave RNA assemble and leave RNA polymerase by itself to go ahead and finish transcription. And then lastly, to terminate transcription, RNA polymerase hits a terminator site that we're not going to talk about, but also becomes dephosphorylated. So right here, basically you're going to remove these phosphates, becomes dephosphorylated by a phosphatase, and we're not going to get into which one, and that turns off the RNA polymerase 2 from transcribing, and actually the RNA polymerase 2 will then fall off of the DNA strand, and it can now go on and do this again. Okay, it can be recycled and transcribed again. Okay, so to summarize again, you have a Tata box region, which is the promoter. 
We have a TF2D TBP complex, general transcription factors that bind to the promoter. They bend the DNA in a 90 degree angle, providing a landmark site that recruits other transcription factors and the RNA polymerase II to that site. Once everything's bound in the, in the, initi pre, the transcription initiation complex, the TF2H here will phosphorylate RNA polymerase II, stimulating RNA polymerase II to start transcribing going off on its own. The transcription factors will disassemble and fall off of the promoter site and you get transcription. Once transcription is done, the RNA polymerase II is dephosphorylated by phosphatases and that causes the RNA polymerase II to fall off of the DNA and to basically recycle back to the very beginning and start this process over again. Okay, so four step process on how eukaryotic transcription is initiated. So to review what we talked about in this video lecture, we've already talked about DNA replication. Now we're talking about how DNA is, is turned into messenger RNA. And remember, this occurs still in the nucleus. So here is DNA being made into messenger RNA inside the nucleus. And the next video lecture, if you want to watch it, um, talks about how we take this mRNA and turn it into a mature strand of mRNA that can now be exported out of the nucleus and turned into protein. Because right now what we have is what's, what's called a pre-mRNA where it's not uh, ready to be actually turned into protein yet in eukaryotic cells. In the next video, we'll talk about how we do that. I hope this video helped you out. Let me know if you have any questions on it. Uh, send me some emails or see me in class uh, or see me on Monday before the exam.